In a prior video, I spoke of Taylor Swift's song, uh, Antihero. And it's a song that I'm really, really fond of, um, a song that I really like, and a song that I think is really great, you know, and, and really quite profound. It's a song that will reverberate through the ages. And I don't find that, uh, I, I find it mysterious, I'll, I'll just put it that way. I find it mysterious that uh, that that Taylor Swift has suddenly written this quality uh, of uh, of a pop song, which isn't to say that she's bad, that she's been uh, you know that she doesn't have skill, that she doesn't have talent uh, or anything like that. I'm not I'm not saying anything like that. I am I am, however, saying that if you look at uh, the corpus of her work prior to this song. Uh, nothing really prepares you for this. This song seems to come out of nowhere. Uh, you know, sometimes with an artist, you can chart the evolution. You can see how, uh, they went from this to this, to this, to this, to this. Um, <clears throat> and it makes sense. You know, you, you, uh, you draw a line between the dots, between from one dot to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, and, and, you know, admittedly, I don't know, uh, the entirety of Taylor Swift's uh, uh, corpus of, uh, of songs. So it might be that I'm wrong. It might be that her, her prior album, uh, you know, contains some semi-profound songs that I'm not aware of. I don't know. But it just seems to me like this one just comes out of absolute nowhere. And that's what made me, uh, as, as far as quality, as far as profundity, and uh, that's what made me speculate as to, you know, whether it perhaps could have been ghostwritten, who really knows, you know, uh, uh, who knows who actually writes the songs, <laughs> you know, to refer back to Barry Manilow's, uh, hit from, a, uh, several decades ago. Um, you know, he, he, in that song, he says, I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Well, who is, the, who is I, <laughs> who, who is that person? Who is the songwriter? You know, um, and, uh, under, under the silver lake, the movie has a scene uh, that I spoke of in a prior video where there's some character who it turns out has been churning out all of these songs, you know, for decades that people feel, you know, they can relate to and they, they associate it with the, the artist who, who sang it. And it turned out it's just, it's just, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this one this one guy, uh, who's writing all of these songs, who's got, uh, you know, who, who's, whose, um, job it is to, uh, socially engineer society through the writing of these songs to, 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 to manufacture rebellion, to manufacture, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, ideas of relationships and romance and whatever, um, and to shape, you know, the human mind, uh, uh, anyway, this is, that's a long preamble. Let me just say, uh, I will, I will stipulate that Taylor Swift actually wrote this song. I'll, I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and, and say, you know, she just sort of grew another, uh, uh, grew another brain or grew this, uh, this, this kind of, um, I don't know, this, this talent organ or this, 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 uh, capacity for, for lyrical profundity that w had not been there previously, even though, as I said, I'm not saying she, I'm not putting her down. I'm not saying she's not talented or anything like that, or that she hasn't been talented or hasn't written, you know, good songs prior to now, even though I'm not exactly a fan. So anti-hero, what's it all about? I'm going to argue first, first of all, that I think what makes this song so singular uh, is I think this might be the first uh, uh, pop song that could be called anti-feminist, uh, you know, in, in a long, long time, perhaps ever. Uh, you know, I know that if you, if you want to uh, get technical, uh, you, you could say that Tammy Wynette uh, singing, uh, you know, stand by your man, whenever that was, was that in the sixties or something, uh, that that was, and that there were other examples from the past of, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, 
a female singer expressing uh, uh, a uh, a perspective or a point of view that seems to go against the prevalent, uh, you know, feminism that's just sort of in the air and in the water, and it's part of the whole dominant ideology that we all have to buy into, you know, unless we unless we become aware, uh, unless we become red pilled. Uh, and and start to consider you know the kind of ideologies that are just just being uh, that we're just being forced to uh, inhale uh, as it were um, without examination. This is a very uh, uh, contemplative song. It's a song about s- uh, self-examination, and it's a it's a very uh, uh, humble. It's, it's a song that expresses humility uh, and, uh, you know, painful self-awareness. And what is the painful self-awareness? It is the awareness that the woman speaking is the problem. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Um, you know, and she, she talks, uh, again, that brilliant line, uh, I look direct. I I'll stare directly in the sun, but never in the mirror. Uh, that that sh- she's finally being forced to examine herself in a way that's honest, the same way that you know looking into your own eyeballs in the mirror forces you to be honest about about yourself. You know, doing doing this, uh, but but in a deeper sense, looking into the uh, the bowels of your own soul, as it were. Um, you know, forces uh, you to be honest with yourself. And and the typical thing you would hear uh, is female empowerment. You know, I can, I can do anything. I don't need no man. I'm strong. I kick ass. Um, you know, this is, this is, these are the, the messages we get uh, from, from female uh, pop songs, uh, female singers of pop songs. Um, uh, you know, these, this, this, this manufactured, um, perspective, uh, this, this manufactured and controlled, uh, and again, highly formulaic and formulated perspective. You know, this is just like, it's just like getting a drink from a vending machine. Uh, and this, you know, this drink, uh, has been bottled with certain ingredients. Well, you you hear uh, a feminist pop song, and it's just sort of like, oh yeah, here all those same ingredients again. I don't need no man. Uh, I'm I'm strong. I'm awesome. Uh, uh, you know, and so forth and so on. Uh, just endless braggadocio. But somehow it's not obnoxious. It's not. It's, we're not supposed to see it as obnoxious. We're not supposed to see it as overtly prideful. Uh, like we would if a man were saying those things, because it's just, it's, it's empowering, it's empowerment, you know, that's, that's what we've been trained to think anyway. Now, I think in a later video, I might go line by line through, uh, through the song Antihero, uh, but for now, I'm just going to stick with a couple of lines that I think say a lot, and uh, the one that, that, that jumps out at me uh, you know, aside from the the, the the refrain about I'll look directly in the sun, but never in the mirror. Uh, you know, I'll I'll do something that will that is dangerous. That you know, I'll I'll uh, uh, I'll tempt fate. I'll tempt blindness. You know, I'll fl- sort of the like Icarus flying too close to the sun kind of thing. I'll, I'll look right at the sun, thinking that you know the su- even the sun can't hurt can't burn my the retinas of my eyes. Uh, but never in the mirror, because if I, if I really were to examine myself, I wouldn't like what I saw. Um, so that's a brilliant, brilliant line and it applies to everybody. I mean, it's not just women, it's, it's men and women, both. It's all of us. Okay. In a deeper sense, I I think this is a song that could be, you know, that that's very relatable that, that, that we can all, uh, all understand, uh, whether we're male or female. But I do think that there's something interesting about having a, a woman sing a song where she says, I should not be left to my own devices. I should not be left to my own devices. 
They lead to vices and crises. Um, sorry, they lead to vices and, and prices. Uh, and, I, and I end up in crisis. Okay. Now, that's really something. That's really something to hear a woman say, I should not be left up, up to my own devices. Because everything that we hear out of, uh, out of Hollywood, out of just this manufactured ideology, part of which is, you know, uh, this manufactured uh, uh, feminism uh, of today uh, is the very opposite of that. You know, I, I leave me to my own devices. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'll, I can do anything on my own. I don't need, I don't need a man. Uh, but here it's sort of this admission that if I'm left to my own devices, things go wrong. Things go haywire. Uh, I do things that screw up my life. Um, and perhaps the suggestion there, dare I say, that uh, she's saying uh, she needs guidance. She needs uh, a helping hand. She needs to be led, dare I say. Um, she needs to submit, dare I say. Uh, she would be in better shape if somebody came along and, and led her and forced her to stop being so prideful, to stop thinking that she could, that she should be the leader, that she should be the one who, uh, who controls things, uh, because that's just not, that's not her place in nature. I wake up screaming from dreaming one day, uh, you'll leave, uh, uh, when you get tired of all my scheming, um, and, and, uh, and my life will be over. Uh, for the last time. Um, I'm approximating the words there. But she's describing being in a relationship and, and always, you know, being uh, uh, the one who's, who's doing the scheming, who's, who's, who's trying to mess with everything, trying to scheme, um, you know, trying to get her way, uh, refusing to be submissive. Um, and finally, the guy, and by the way, being submissive doesn't mean uh, doesn't doesn't mean anything. You shouldn't think uh, that submission equates to something that is uh, humiliating, or that is frightening, or scary, or um, or means that your full humanity is not acknowledged, uh, or anything like that. But just it just means saying. I will be led. Uh, I will be humble. And this is something that men also uh, are are asked to do. Um, men are led, asked, you know, should be led. According to Scripture, men ought to be led directly by God and should imitate God, should be God, for their wives and wives should submit to their husbands. But the submit that the wives submitting to their husbands. It also uh, is a it requires requires the reciprocal uh, gesture of of hus husbands being uh, good caretakers of their wives of, of of being safeguarders and protectors um, and so forth. Um, so it's a two way street. But I. I really don't think that I'm off <clears throat> on this point. Um, because she talks about, uh, the, the speaker talks about how, uh, you know, she's, she, her refusal to, uh, to submit and her insistence up, uh, upon being left to her own devices, being the one in charge leads to this situation where when she's in a potential relationship, uh, that, uh, she's, she's always, uh, just, uh, just trying to take charge and, and, and doing this and doing that and, 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 and scheming, 
scheming for power, scheming for control, uh, and uh, and just creating in creating chaos because this is this is going against nature until eventually she she uh, uh, she she anticipates the the, the man uh, leaving, you know, because he's had enough, and uh, that will be the end of her when that happens. So that's what I think is part of what is m- makes this song extraordinary and a real standout uh, compared to you know what is generally manufactured today. Uh, is we we find in the song the admission uh, I should not. First of all, I'm the problem. It's me. Second of all, I. I should not be left to my own devices. That's a, uh, that's a real, uh, bitter pill for, uh, uh, for the modern woman to swallow. Um, but again, ex- more extensively, it's a bitter pill for all of us because the modern age is an age in which we, uh, you know, or the, the, the rulers of the age, the usurping rulers of the age, uh, you know, want to wrest control away from our uh, true creator, from God, and to become gods ourselves. And to, to say, you know, we can make the world in our own image. We can make our own reality um, and, uh, and so forth, which, which is not something we were ever designed to do. We were designed... Uh, to be submissive to our creator, all of us, men and women alike. Um, but this is a song by a woman singing about, uh, singing about a lot of things, but, but one of them is a failing relationship. And she's admitting that part of the reason why this, this relationship is failing, has been failing or will end up failing, is because she's just falling into the same old habits uh, and that's because she's been left to her own devices, and the 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 uh, responsibility for that rests with you know the uh, rests with men actually, um, because men have we've all allowed the situation to become the way the way that it is, uh, and that has led to deep unhappiness all around. It's led to unhappiness specifically for women because now they, they think they're in control. They think it's proper for them to be in control. Uh, and they, they have, uh, you know, they, they think that it's proper for them to, instead of safeguarding their purity, uh, you know, uh, uh, until they're, uh, until they're married, uh, the, which was, which has been the standard, uh, notion of, uh, of sexual morality for ages and ages uh, until like 60 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, things suddenly got flipped on their head. And now women are encouraged to go out and, you know, uh, and do what they want, have, have fun with as many men as they want. And when you leave women to their own devices in this way, it leads to vices, the vice of, uh, of immodesty, the, the vice of, uh, of unchastity, um, the vice of licentiousness and, and others, um, and prices and the prices that, uh, this deep unhappiness because, because they are acting in a manner that is contrary to, uh, to how they were created and to what will actually, uh, give them, give them uh, fulfillment and happiness. All right. So I'll stop with my assessment of, uh, the lyrics of Taylor Swift's anti-hero. Uh, and like I said, uh, next time, next time I cover this topic, I think I'll have the whole lyrics in front of me and I'll, I'll go more line by line, uh, because I think it's worth it. I think it's a really, a really good song, uh, that, uh, that is, uh, is worth going over, worth examining. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. Talk to y'all soon.